Aloha, it's a Wednesday afternoon over the hump day. And this is Mitch Ewan, I'm your host today. And uh, this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And our sponsor is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, who tries, uh, our, our objective is to develop good policies, support good policies, to develop a clean energy, uh, energy uh, infrastructure here in Hawaii. Um, the funding comes from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, uh, which is where I have my day job. So I'm very uh, pleased to have uh, uh, Dennis Furukawa. He's the CEO and founder of Real Green Power. And he's been in Hawaii for about 10 years and he's developed the modular sanitation systems, which is also based on UH uh, technology, but I'm not gonna steal Dennis's thunder. So Dennis, uh, welcome to the show and talk to us about modular sanitation systems. Well, thanks for having me, Mitch, and uh, glad to be on the show. Um, so yeah, as you mentioned, we have technology that came from uh, UH, but it was originally from the College of Tropical Agriculture. Um, and with the cooperation of UH, uh, we uh, adapted that technology for use in domestic, so human uh, sewage. Um, and we came up with an alternative means of treating sewage. And uh, it is particularly um, low in its energy demands. And it also has a lot of uh, positive environmental um, aspects to it. So we can, you know, talk further about that. What, what is the actual basis of the technology? What's the kind of the secret sauce? Without giving away any secrets, but what's mm -hmm. the, you know, for the fundamental uh, um, uh, technology behind this that you were able to license from the University of Hawaii? Uh, the fundamental technology is anaerobic digestion, um, which is pretty common um, and well understood in a, a sort of worldwide. Um, but um, uh, the way that we've, um, uh, you know, improved the state of the art, as it were, is, is um, through uh, the way that we apply anaerobic di digestion technology. Um, originally, we came in um, with the way that a lot of people come into the uh, renewables area with anaerobic digestion, which is to focus on the possibility or the, you know, the, the focusing on, on producing methane as, as the um, primary outcome. And, um, and, you know, methane from biological sources is, uh, is, is, is um, well understood and they're applying it in India and Mexico and in China um, uh, and in Europe. Uh, so they, they use sealed vessels where the bacteria break down organic, um, you know, like food wastes or, or sewage. Um, the bacteria breaks that down and produces methane. What we so anaerobic, um, just, just, uh, just let me interrupt. Uh, just so people know what anaerobic means. That's tell us what the anaerobic. That's like a, a big word. Most people okay. might not understand what that actually means. <laughs> right. So it means um, in the absence of air. Uh, so um, in the absence of oxygen uh, is the is the real objective there. Um, and a whole species of bacteria live in uh, anaerobic situations. Um, so uh, they exist, actually they're some of the oldest uh, life forms on the planet um, and they live in, they're, they're all around us. They're, uh, they're in the soils, they're in the mud underwater um, and they're active in breaking down, um, you know, like, uh, bits of, uh, you know, woody detritus or algae or whatever that settles down in the bottom. And um, one of the uh, aspects of anaerobic uh, biology is, is that there's, a, they have a powerful ability to break down uh, macromolecules. Um, uh, and uh, it's, and, and the outcome of methane is actually 
um, the, uh, the product of a whole chain of biological processes um, with uh, a whole suite of bacteria. So it's not just one kind of bacteria. Um, it is a, uh, it's a whole chain of uh, bacterial um, uh, processes that goes on. And it's the same sort of thing that happens. So if, if you uh, take a, you know, if you use your, your, yourself, your body as a, an example, so, right, you take in food from your mouth, that's one process, you chew it, it's breaking it down. Uh, and then in your stomach, uh, there's, you know, acids that are deployed. Um, and those, uh, you know, further break down the um, molecules. And uh, then uh, the food slurry gets into your intestines where it is progressively broken down by in, intestinal bacteria. Um, and, and once those uh, bacteria solubilize, which means like turn it into liquid, they solubilize the, um, the food's nutrients, then they're absorbed through the intestinal walls. Um, and then, uh, you know, when you talk about, you know, uh, passing gas, right? I mean, that is, uh, that's methane, methane and carbon dioxide. And those are the same bacteria inside your gut that are um, being utilized in anaerobic digestion to produce methane. Thank you for that. Yeah, all right. Yeah. So um, what we've done is, uh, is focused our efforts, not necessarily on methane, but by but focusing the uh, the bacterial uh, that the bacterial processes on breaking down the macromolecules, so like undigested food in particular or toilet paper, um, those uh, those um, those substances uh, require um, some uh, you know real strong biological processes to, to break it down. And typically those, those processor, processes are um, performed in sewage treatment plants by aerobic bacteria. Um, and aerobic bacteria uh, that are doing that work are actually relatively large. I mean, you can see these bacteria uh, um, and, uh, you know, um, they're, they're actually visible to the naked eye, a lot of them. Um, uh, so rotifers and uh, amoeba and those sorts of things that you can see with a magnifying glass. Um, and whereas the, um, and, and so those larger um, critters, they, they actually, they literally ch take, you know, bites out of the, the, um, the foodstuffs and, and, and toilet paper. Uh, and then they excrete out uh, broken down um, uh, wastes that are uh, the foods for, uh, uh, you know, smaller chains of bacteria. And those are the ones that uh, will um, solubilize. They will actually turn the solids into liquids. So what we're looking to do is to harness the um, anaerobic bacteria that do that same work. Um, but you, but you don't have to provide oxygen uh, in their environment to do that. Um, and the the so this is where energy gets into it. So when you have um, a, a, like a liter of water that have bacteria in it, and that you feed the bacteria, so we're talking about aerobic bacteria. If you feed them some things, they um, will will, as they're consuming the, the foodstuffs, the substances in the water, they also utilize the dissolved oxygen in the water. And, and very quickly, that oxygen level goes down to zero, and then those aerobic bacteria die. So you have to continually replenish the oxygen level in aerobic uh, sewage treatment plants. And that's a huge, huge ex uh, expense in energy. Um, so by harnessing anaerobic to, uh, bacteria to do that same work of breaking down, solubilizing the, the food wastes and toilet paper, um, 
then uh, you have not expended any energy uh, or you know relatively little. You're only using the energy to move the, the, the wastes into the environment where the anaerobic bacteria are. Um, uh, in Hawaii, um, you don't need to use any energy to keep them um, warm. Um, these bacteria are uh, very much uh, akin to the same bacteria that's in your intestines, and so you know that they're um, they're they're comfortable at, at you know sort of like uh, human body temperature. So. Um, Hawaii's uh, environment allows us to take advantage of the um, that that uh, you know the efficiency of, of of performing these biochemical reactions in in a temperature band that uh, is suitable for our you know bacteria. So what we're able to do is um, to take the food wastes and toilet paper and break them down into soluble um, uh, substrates uh, that, uh, and we can do that with very, very little energy. So um, we're looking at about 15% of the energy that's uh, going into um, sewage treatment. So compared to a normal sewage treatment plant, we're using about 15% of that energy um, to get our wastes into the anaerobic digester and, um, and have that uh, waste broken down. And then what we do is we put our wastes into uh, an aerobic um, treatment vessel. And that aerobic treatment oh. vessel uh, utilizes the high rate of metabolism that aerobic bacteria um, uh, you know, are they're characterized by, uh, and they um, quickly uh, absorb, uh, consume the solubilized wastes. So just to be perfectly clear, in case people keyed on 15%, you're actually mm -hmm. saving 85% of the energy. It's 85% more efficient. Well, actually, for that first I stage, let me correct you. That first um, stage, correct? So, so we're about at, we're, we are, the results of our of our um, um, trials, our pilot um, trials, was that we saved fifty percent of the energy. But what we were able yeah. to do was reduce the sludge that comes out of sewage treatment by eighty five percent, and that's another one of those real um, important sustainability, uh, you know, uh, outcomes. Um, because sewage sludge is a real, that's actually one of the most expensive and um, time consuming, like in man hours, uh, um, activities right. is like managing sewage sludge. So what happens when aerobic bacteria um, um, are fed, they reproduce very quickly and that reproduction produces biomass. So it's actually a conversion of, of solubilized um, uh, you know, substrates, converting it into actual bacterial bodies. Um, and those, those um, are, it's actually a bit of an explosion of, of uh, additional mass um, by uh, introducing, um, you know, soluble foods into aerobic um, uh, environments, which is one of the situations that 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 um, people are familiar with, like algae blooms and whatnot. Um, so what you have there is you have nutrients that are flowing into, for instance, like Chesapeake Bay, um, and uh, those uh, nutrients feed algae, and there's an explosion of algae, and quickly those algae. Um, they create dead zones because they they uh, consume all of the uh, dissolved oxygen in the water, um, and uh, they also exude toxins that are that kill fish and sell fish. So, well, let's talk a little bit about the modular sanitation systems now. I think you brought some slides along, so why don't we walk our way through? Your, uh, you know, your system and, and show show what it looks like and how it works. Okay. So let's bring up the first slide. Well, well modular Great sanitation. Logo. 
Oh, thanks. Monitor Sanitation Systems is a is a subsidiary of Real Green Power, um, and Real Green Power holds the technology uh, license. And Modular Sanitation Systems um, is our vehicle of actually getting the technology out there um, and putting it to work. So one of the uh, so really our first commercial project is um, at a homeless camp. It's a, so the homeless uh, camp is uh, designed to be a temporary facility. Um, the idea was is that uh, we would not put any permanent buildings or any permanent improvements on the site. Um, and the site uh, is, is situated near the, um, the port of Honolulu. Uh, it's uh, um, close to the uh, small boat harbor um, and, uh, and right on the edge of the uh, inundation zones um, in, in case there was like a you know tsunami it would be one of those situations where um, uh, yeah there would be a, a, a limited amount of flooding but um, what we were uh, tasked with was to uh, find uh, or de design a replacement to a, a whole suite of um, blue portable toilets and um, and replace them with an on-site uh, treatment system. Um, and the objective would be to uh, um, really save money uh, as well as to provide um, more, uh, you know, homey uh, facilities for the, the residents of the homeless camp. So if you go to the next slide, um, what we put together was uh, in shipping containers, uh, there's a whole a series of private bathrooms. Um, and, and if you go to the next slide, those portable, those, those, those individual bathrooms are connected to what you see here is a miniature sewage treatment plant, which um, has uh, solar panels on the top of it. And those solar panels actually operate all of the wastewater treatment as well as they provide the energy for operating the, um, the toilets and the pumps that um, the uh, bathroom module uh, relies on. So, um, and as I was saying that the energy uh, efficiency of our system is very high. Uh, it, it really doesn't take very much energy at all to actually perform the, the sewage treatment itself. Um, and we have lithium batteries that store the solar energy um, and that runs the whole um, uh, sanitar sanitary system uh, entirely. So it, okay. it, it, it's suitable for off-grid use absolutely right okay. so let's have the next slide so, up. Yep. so uh so that's the that's the design of the basic module and if you go to the um, next slide um so that's in a 20-foot shipping container um what we've got is we've we're, we've adapted this design actually to, uh, because all right, the original module was designed for um, a very large, so it's about 100, 115 people of uh, our full-time residents there. We're looking at um, uh, a smaller units, which would use a toilet, you know, individual um, toilet cassettes, essentially, um, that would plug into a, a shipping container that already had um, the uh, wastewater treatment uh, equipment already mounted in there. So that would be designed for, uh, you know, a drop and operate kind of uh, 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 situation. So for instance, like you had um, a, uh, a disaster, uh, you could get one of these things up and running in a couple days. So that, that's, that's what that design was for. And if you go to the next slide, I think you'll see um, all right, so th this is just an in interior plan of, uh, of the treatment unit, and, and it's quite simple. I mean, so basically we have um, 
on the far left, a receiving tank. And then we have a series of anaerobic digestion vessels and followed by an aerobic vessel, treatment vessel in, in yellow. And then there's a, a holding tank for the treated water on the right. It's, it's, it's pretty lean and it's, it's very effective. So um, there you go, in a 20 foot shipping container, this will handle, uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the toilet waste of at least 100 people like full time. And showers as well. They're incorporated. Well, uh, the showers, actually, if you go to the next slide. So showers, we've broken out um, uh, as a separate process. Uh, but this, this shows the, the whole, um, essentially, the guts of the operation, uh, showing, uh, you know, the relative uh, position of uh, the solar panels and the electrical systems and, and, and water filtration. So, um, uh, but I think if you go to the next slide, uh, so what we've done is is uh, we've taken the the treated water and um, and water from showers, which is which is filtered, uh, and we're we're irrigating um, uh, a dedicated garden, which is uh, uh, which features bananas and papayas and tea and um, heliconias and those uh, are um, they're growing fast and they're situated right next to the um, the homeless camp um, so really the next the next step there is um, uh, there'll be additional bedroom units added to that camp and so we'll be expanding um, all of the facilities to accommodate, I think we're we're looking at about you know sixty to eighty more residents, and so we'll we'll have to add more capacity into our system. And so, what's what's been the reception by the actual residents there? I mean, what's been the reaction, and uh, how long have we been in operation, and what are so some, it's some been of the a, yeah, it's been a, it's been a little over a year um, in operation. And um, it, the uh, basically the the wastewater treatment system it's out of sight and out of mind. I mean the the main issue is is that um, you know the residents don't have to rely on um, going to blue porta potties. They use you know flush toilets um, and. Uh, uh, it's hard to get them out of the bathroom, <laughs> basically, you know, they, uh, they appreciate having the, um, you know, uh, accommodations like a normal home, which is uh, what this system is, is really designed for. So yeah, I remember there is I went no, to... okay. Sorry. well, I'll just talk over. So I remember I went to visit it with you one day and when it was first installed and one of the ladies at the camp said, Wow, this is so awesome. This is just like in a fancy hotel. She was so blown away by it. And so, like you said, so appreciative that, uh, you know, that we upgraded their facilities like that. So it was actually, you know, kind of heart rendering to see, you know, how appreciative they were of that. Of course, what we're trying to do with, with our homeless community is to help them transition from the streets to, you know, employment and living a normal life. So this has really, really been helpful. That well, was my, um, observ my first observation. So. Yeah, I should have mentioned that this uh, whole unit is actually it's surrounded by um, housing mo um, modules, right? So the, there's uh, bedrooms um, in shipping containers, converted shipping containers, and they're situated okay. Um, you know, in close proximity to these bathrooms and the sewage treatment unit. Um, and it is never been a source of um, irritation or odors or, you know, it, it, it's quiet. Uh, and, and there is no, um, uh, you know, sludge uh, removal um, and you know sludge drying and, and anything noxious there's no flies 
there there's there's no waste um all of the effluents are are treated and um they go out underground um and uh you know to uh we're 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 putting thousands of gallons a day into irrigation uh and uh, we're growing papayas uh you know by by the bushel they're they're coming out of the ground really really fast we're coming close to the end of our time so uh how about painting a picture of the way forward and uh developments that are coming up in the future i think you have one slide that you want to talk to um right. and where, where are we going with this all right so um you know the 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 big lesson that we uh learned is is that we can put sewage treatment um in close proximity to housing and it's not uh and it, it doesn't create a lot of um friction uh so um and the water that we produce is useful for irrigation so if, if you go to that next slide um the the final slide what we are looking at in honolulu is if you see on the left hand side there's sand island sand island is where the main um sewage treatment plant for uh, Honolulu is located. And essentially all of those valleys that you're looking at on, in this map um, are connected to Sand Island. But at the same time, all of those valleys are at uh, uh, higher elevations than Sand Island uh, in, in, in a lot of the cases fairly significantly, you know, at least 100, 200 feet in elevation. So um, our idea is, is to situate um, small package sewage treatment units in, uh, in all of these valleys um, and, and, con and connect them to the existing sewer uh, uh, infrastructure. And instead of the water going down to the Sand Island um, sewage treatment plant, it would it would be diverted into these modular um, treatment units, and then that water would be going towards irrigating um, parklands, golf courses, uh, you know, roadway landscaping, um, uh, buffer zones, uh, you know, uh, uh, school yards, um, any areas where uh, you can use, uh, you know, drip irrigation. Um, would be highly uh, um, suitable for the for you know reusing treated water. So and there's uh, a what tremendous we'd like to see, right, right, right. We would be essentially cutting cutting um, the sewage that's going down to Sand Island and, and directly reducing those operational costs there. And if our system is actually using half the energy and reducing the sludge by 85%, then, you know, uh, we could be uh, reducing our um, uh, energy bills and, dis and sludge disposal bills by at least half uh, by investing in distributed sewage treatment. So that's a huge that's our, savings. Our yeah. it's, it's massive. Yeah, it's massive. So I'd like to because put, I we, think we that, gotta, go ahead. Uh, that the sewage treatment plant itself is one of the largest single energy users in the state. Uh, I think that it was like 13 or 15 percent, the sewage treatment plants okay. out of all of the energy. It, yeah. right. So it's got a, it can have a significant impact. So I'd like to make one final plug for the University of Hawaii because everybody tends to not, you know, not understand how the university helps the community and solves problems. Well, here's a direct application of uh, what our scientists at the University of Hawaii develop. And now that Real Green Power is applying to make lives better, we've seen how it's making the homeless lives are better, better quality of life. And also we can have the potential to save, you know, a lot of money in this distributed uh, sewage uh, treatment system that uh, Dennis has so eloquently uh, described. So I just want to get that plug in because everybody likes to uh, criticize the university when some major event happens and we don't get enough credit for the good things we do. 
And so we're actually trying to solve uh, today's problems uh, in our labs with our very talented uh, scientists, and uh, that's a good thing. So Dennis, thank you so much for uh, uh, coming on the show today and telling us about Real Green Power and your uh, modular sanitation systems, sewage systems, and uh, good luck going forward. And thank, thanks again, and come back again and tell us how it's going. Give us an update as you go along. Thanks, Mitch. So aloha, aloha. and we'll be back uh, next Wednesday. I actually have another guest lined up, not the last minute Charlie that I normally am, and he's gonna be talking uh, further about some of the uh, wonderful technology that's coming out of uh, University of Hawaii, and in particular, plug the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, HNEI. So I look forward to being able to share that with you next week. Aloha.